Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another Rev Review. More like an unboxing, but you get the idea. So, if you've been watching professional cycling, just last month in October, early part of October, Paris-Roubaix, which is a, you know, one of the older mixed terrain type rides, those that gravel now, you've got pavement, you've got cobblestones, and... It's very hard on equipment. Well, this last uh, edition of it was held in October. COVID, of course, should have been held in April. That's usually when it's held. But it was held in October. And the two winners, male and female winner, both were on tubeless tires. So this is the first time that's happened. And the men's winner, Sonny Cabrelli, was on this Continental 5000 str tire that we're going to talk about today so before we get into the topic of today if you would please subscribe to the channel like and share also hit that notification bell so that youtube thinks this topic is or this video is relevant and will uh, push it on up either in searches or in just other people's feed so thank you for those of you who have subscribed, we're up to, I don't know, 610 subscribers on November 1st. Yep, November 1st of 2021. Anyway, thank you so much for those of you who have subscribed. Okay, so let's get started on the topic of today. The, um, the new Continental STR tire. I got, I got some in. This is the 28 millimeter version. And it's an interesting, or there's a reason why I've chosen the 28 and uh, the 25 previous TL version. So, first, a little bit of history. So, excuse me. Um, for those of you who've been riding a while, or maybe riding Continental for a while, you might recall there was the GP, or the Grand Prix, 3000 tire. Then that tire was replaced in 2004 by the 4000. And that tire was the venerable clincher tire for 14 years. That, that 4000 tire was a very, very popular tire, dominated the market, and you know, just took so much market share from all the other tire brands. And one of the great things about that Continental GP 4000 was it was the first time you could really have a tire you could train with you could race on Sunday and ride on Monday it was just one of those great tires so that tire took about 14 years for Continental to come out with the 5000 tubeless tire TL tubeless but even though it took them 14 years to replace the 4000 Tubeless tires had been out for 10 years before Continental even decided to change it. So once Continental got into the tubeless game, then it seemed like, okay, the tubeless technology for road was going to stick around because of that. So that's a little bit of history. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 TL tubeless. They also made a clincher version. And then the 5000 now is the str now if you go back and you look at the history of of the 4000 when the tubeless version came out uh, let me let me re just refer to my notes they claimed um a 12 percent rolling resistance or better rolling resistance and 20 percent better puncture resistance going from the 4000 to the 5,000, not tubeless, just the regular clincher one. Then the tubeless one was another 5% in each of those metrics. So it was a dramatic improvement going from the 4,000, 5,000 non-tubeless, and then another 5% improvements in those two areas for the tubeless version. Now here come the claims for the 5,000 STR. Well, here we go. They claim it's 50 grams lighter per size. So if you have a 28 tire from the tubeless version, 5,000 TL, to the STR, 28 tire, that would be a 50 gram savings. 
they claim 28% better sidewall protection, which is a lot. <laughs> and then they claim 20% better rolling resistance on the new STR. Of course, one of the biggest things that we all had as either mechanics or people that did their own tire changes out on the side of the road, ease of mounting is something that they are promoting now with their new tire and the fact that they they are now hookless rim compatible. So you've got brands like Zip, Envy, and Hunt that do these types of two, uh, hookless beads and the 5000 TL was not recommended. It was not compatible with that. So the STR addresses that, um, that new wheel technology. So those are the kinds of things that the new 5000 STR claims. Well, let's address each one because, I mean, it sounds great, all these improvements, but there's a caveat, and I, I hope that you catch it as we go a little bit further along. So um, first thing, they claim that it's 50 grams lighter. Well, yeah, they are significantly lighter, but there's a, there's a reason why. And um, a little later, I'm gonna show the weights of these tires, the STR. I don't want to <laughs> move the camera at this point. But the 5000 TL tire, which I have here, and then the 28 STR tire, you're going to be pretty shocked about this. The STR tire, well, let's start with this because it's 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 better to go down, right? This 25 TL, I have weights, I have weighed several of them. They're around 304 grams, give or take a few grams. 304 and the new 28 STR, so a bigger size tire is 259 so that's i mean we're looking at from 25 up to 28 and yet we've dropped over 50 grams so that's pretty impressive unfortunately i don't have a 28 tl tire to weigh with the str because well covid and they're all sold out right so i don't have a 28 tire to compare 28 tubeless and 28 str that's pretty interesting. Next thing is the 28% sidewall protection. You know, as I'm handling this STR tire, you could just tell it's a lot thinner. And I mean, it is noticeable, even though this is 25 and this is 28, it is noticeable that this tire is lighter. So that 28% sidewall protection, that's good but you have to know how they achieved it so they've gone from three plies of 60 tpi and that's threads per inch i'll address that in a second down to two plies of, of 110 tpi um let's cover tpi real quick so threads per inch um if you were to look at let's say bedding the higher the threads per inch the softer, the more luxurious the material feels. Uh, same thing if you're if you're looking at dress shirts. You have a higher TPI, like Egyptian broadcloth, and it's just it's just softer and and as I said before, more luxurious of a feel. So they've gone from three plies of sixty to two plies of one ten. But then what they did is. Where the other tires had three plies on the tread and only two plies on the sidewall, the newer tires are two on the tread and three on the sidewall. So there you go. You're getting your increased sidewall protection because now you have three plies on the sidewall. But on the tread part, you've only got two plies. Now that's all underneath the rubber. So as far as the wear and tear, oh, the mileage is going to be the same because you still have the same amount of rubber. But as far as its puncture resistance, 
it's been lessened. As a matter of fact, um, we'll get into it on the rolling resistance side of things. But also, um, one of the things that was different about the 5000 tubeless is it was called a full tubeless tire. And that meant that that tire, so if you run a 5000 tubeless now, a TL, and you have some back stock or something, you can run that tire without sealant. It's got a, a butyl um, rubber coating on the inside. It's supposed to seal very well without any sealant. Although, I don't know why you would run a tubeless tire without sealant. One of the benefits of riding tubeless is having sealant to close up a small puncture from a goat head or just small things will seal up if you have a, a sealant inside. But the TL was designed to run without tubeless. The newer tires are designed without that rubber, extra rubber layer. And that is a, um, well, it's a reason why you should be riding the, um, riding the tires with tubeless. Okay, next thing is the 20% rolling resistance. So the first thing we covered was the 50 grams lighter. Yeah, it's lighter, even different sizes. Uh, next thing we covered was the 28% sidewall protection. Okay. We know why they moved the plies around. Now the 20% rolling resistance. There's a website I geek out on a lot and it's called bicyclerollingresistance.com. It ranks all the tires based on their lab tests and they're supposed to be impartial, independent, and um, their results are actually um, quoted by and documented by um, many other sources. So this this is, I think, a reliable source. They said they couldn't find that 20% reduction in rolling resistance in the new STR tire. So I found that interesting because, you know, Continental being a German company, I, I don't think they would make an outlandish claim um, that later would blow up in their face. So, but that's interesting. They said they could not really quantify the 20% rolling resistance, uh, better rolling resistance. Well, if you think about something else, though, in Continental's effort to get that 20% uh, reduction in rolling resistance, and by the way, that just means how hard you have to pedal the bike to keep the bike rolling or to achieve a certain speed, right? Okay, so that rolling resistance... The tread has now gotten thinner. So in the past, the tires used to be somewhere around 2.9 or 2.6 thickness. It's now down to 2.3. And what BicycleRollingResistance.com found is that this tire, while they're claiming 28% better puncture resistance on the sidewall, they actually think it's gone down 30% in puncture resistance from the older tire. Okay, so it's hard to always strike this balance of we want speed, we want grip, we want puncture resistance, and we want the tire to be light, right? So, I mean, something somewhere has to give if you're looking at those four metrics. And in this case, it appears that as they went after a faster and better rolling resistance outcome, when the tread got thinner, the puncture resistance is now not as good. And with my own personal experience on these uh, continent, on these um, 5,000 TL tires, I run them threadbare. I literally will run them all the way down and I've, I won't have a puncture. And for the longest time, <laughs> I was not a fan of tubeless tires just because it, there was no ease of mounting. The puncture resistance wasn't that great. And now you're looking at a tire that you go through all this trouble and then you get a flat or you get a puncture and the sealant sprays out everywhere. So that's another thing to consider. With this thinner tread of 2.3 millimeters, you need the sealant to grab onto something. So the thicker the tire is, the better chances you are 
better chances you have of it sealing. So I'm not sure if that is a step, if that progressed the tire, if it moved it forward. But guess what? The TL is going, going to be discontinued, so you're not going to be able to get that tire. Mark my words, they're going to have to improve that puncture resistance somehow. The TL tire has been a phenomenal tire for puncture resistance, wear, and all those things. But I think they've converted this tire into a race day only tire now. I don't know. You know, for the for the price you pay for these tires, which I'm sure is going to be over $100 or whatever it is, um, I just don't see why they did that. Why did they reduce the puncture resistance? It was such a great tire. All right. Anyway, enough about that. Ease of mounting. I don't know yet. I just took them out of the box. Uh, I will mount them, so we'll get an idea of what that's like. If you've ever had to mount a 5,000 tire, there are some rims that play nice. And there are some rims, <laughs> I mean, it'll take you a very long time. I've actually broken tire levers trying to get a tire on, or a, a 5,000 TL on. So depending on the rim combination that you use with this tire, it has been very, very difficult. There's YouTube um, YouTube videos talking about how difficult these tires are. So I'm not the only one that's experienced this. If these STR tires are easier to mount, then thank goodness, because it's been very, very difficult to mount these tires. And the hookless side of things, you know, point number five, I, I don't have any currently... When I have uh, some service bikes that come in with some of the hookless rims, we'll see how they mount. And, um, you know, one of the things about the hookless technology is your max tire pressure cannot be more than 73 PSI. So, you know, something to consider there, too, if you're someone who believes that a really high tire pressure is the only way to go. But anyway, that's another story. OK, so a couple other things. The tires, they come in 25, 28, 30, and 32. That's right. You heard 30. 30 is interesting because it kind of splits that gap between that 28 and that 32, where 28 seems like a really good roadworthy tire for, you know, terrible roads or uh, something like that. Not graveling, although that's what I gravel with is 28 tires. And 32 just seems so big, <laughs> uh, depending on the rim, rim prof, um, the rim width. I mean, a 32 tire can just balloon. So I'm happy to see that they have a 30 tire. Um, Schwabi had a 30 tire, and depending on the application, sometimes a 30 tire is what you need. You don't need the big, big 32. Just my opinion on the roadside obviously if you're in dirt you know if you got 47 millimeter 650 clearance hey wonderful right so um those are kind of the no i want to check my notes and just make sure i've covered everything but um that's probably the most important things that i wanted you to know about this tire but um, one of the things I want to do now, or the next thing I want to do now is I want to be able to, to weigh them for you so that you can see, uh, for yourself. And so I'm going to grab the, uh, camera and just, uh, excuse the transition. So this right here is the STR tire. You can see that branding there. And this is just the standard tire. And hopefully you can see that it says 25 there. All right. So here's our scale. That's the one that says 25. Okay. We'll put that on the scale. And we're at 304. And this is the STR. And it's hard to find the 28 marking on here. But it is on there. Trust me that it is 25 tire. So 304. 
259 for the STR tire. Well, that's all for today. I'm going to mount the tires, get a ride in on them, and tell you more about them in the future. So please stand by for another video where I talk about having ridden these tires. And um, I'm curious about the puncture resistance because, you know, as an endurance rider, I put a lot of miles on a bike and I don't want to be stranded way out there and not have good puncture resistance or having to, um, I don't know, <laughs> thumb it or Uber to get home. But um, okay, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe. Please share with your friends. And in the meantime, we will see you up the road.